Razer versus Asus. It's the story of two computer manufacturers who one day said, let's make a phone. While Asus made that decision quite some time ago, it only recently released its first gaming phone, the ROG phone. Although the Razer Phone 2 was Razer's second such device, it's but a sophomore facing Asus's ROG phone, as the company has years of mobile and desktop experience behind it. Asus has done well refining its handsets over the years, but Razer's had to adapt quick, overhauling some key misses from last year. We've seen the new kid on the block overtake veterans before. Is this Razer's breakthrough moment? The Razer Phone 2 and ROG phone are clearly cut from different design cloths. While the Razer sports a boxy, rectangular aesthetic with sizable bezels at the top and bottom for stereo speakers, cameras, and mics, the ROG manages to pull off a more edge-to-edge -edge design with its screen, stereo speakers, and camera configuration. The ROG's reddish copper speaker grills also give it some flair, while the rounded corners evoke more traditional design language. The rounded glass back also make the ROG feel more like phones we've held before, but the look is clearly unlike anything we've previously seen. The RGB lit logo and copper vents combine with the angular cutouts for the camera, flash, and fingerprint sensor to create a phone that truly looks like it's part of a gaming PC lineup. The Razer Phone 2, which is still highly evocative of the next bit Robin, from which its design was appropriated, opts for a more discreet look, with its fingerprint sensor tucked away inside the side mounted power button and its glass back, which looks like a solid slab of obsidian, interrupted only by the RGB-lit Chroma logo and center-mounted dual-camera bump. The Razer's backlit logo can also light up based on the color of apps you've received notifications from, blue for Outlook, red for Gmail, and so on, something the ROG lacks. Asus's ROG phone appears more original in its looks, as well as its functionality, thanks to gamer-centric additions like a secondary proprietary port comprised of two USB-C ports for attaching one of the many ROG phone accessories, or just charging the phone while gaming. This is further highlighted by the inclusion of one such accessory in the box, an RGB-lit cooling fan. All that aside, these two phones have very similar weights and dimensions, though the Razer phone appears bigger due to its boxy design. The Razer phone also meets the IP67 standard for dust and water resistance, while the ROG has no such distinction. As always, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and there's merit to both design approaches. But to the unfamiliar observer, the ROG clearly screams gaming, while the Razer phone just screams, I'm something else. Which of these is preferable, naturally, is up to you. The displays on these two reveal further diversions. On one hand, we have the ROG's AMOLED display with a max refresh rate of 90Hz, and on the other, Razer's IGZO LCD with a slightly higher resolution and the faster, ever smooth 120Hz refresh rate. That last part about the refresh rate might have some worried, so we won't mince words. The difference between 90Hz on the ROG and 120Hz on the Razer is noticeable. And for some, this may be the reason they choose the Razer Phone 2 over the ROG. We wouldn't say it's a full-out game winner for the Razer Phone, though. Gaming at 90Hz is a smoother experience on the ROG than most any other non-gaming phone, due to their lower refresh rates. 120Hz on the Razer, though, is as smooth as it gets, and the difference is clear. For prolonged gaming especially, this difference in comfort can have an appreciable impact on eye fatigue, especially during fast-paced games. The difference in resolution is also apparent, with the Razer Phone 2's display looking just a bit sharper. While the ROG's AMOLED display portrays punchy colors and deeper, inky blacks, the Razer Phone 2's IGZO LCD proved to have more accurate colors. In fact, it's one of the most accurate we've seen on a phone. When it comes to tweaking the display to your liking, the ROG offers a few presets as well as manual controls for color, saturation, and sharpness as opposed to the Razer's simple triplet of presets. The differences between these three screen modes are almost imperceptible on the Razer which is good for color accuracy, but bad for variety and customization. Still, the ROG isn't woefully inaccurate in its punchier color representation, so this may come down to preference as well, but we found that the Razer Phone's highly accurate colors mixed with the more fluid 120Hz refresh rate ultimately made the Razer Phone 2 more pleasant to look at and game on. Both the ROG and Razer Phone ship with Android 8.1 on board, and their respective manufacturer software flavor added to the mix. The Razer Phone's implementation errs more on the side of stock Android, utilizing Nova Prime Launcher as the main UI, with a few green icons and apps, as well as the Razer Made Cortex app. This is where you'll find your game library, 120Hz games to buy, and Game Booster. Tweaking performance through Game Booster is pretty simple. You can either customize the performance settings for each app manually, or for all of them at once via mode selection. This offers two modes, power saving and performance, whereas the custom mode affords you the ability to change the resolution, clock speed, frame rate, and anti-aliasing preferences on each individual app. There's quite some range in the options for each of these values, and the near 7 hour difference in projected battery life between the power save and performance modes reflect that. The ROG Phone's UI, like its design, comes off as more custom and unique. Asus has years of Zen UI's growth and refinement driving many of the more custom experiences you'll find in the ROG. 
plus the neon sign-like iconography and dark aesthetic just looks cooler too. Nailing a UX that looks gamer-oriented without being too tacky is another example of Asus's much deeper background in the phone game. The Game Center app offers a few more gaming-specific features as well as a high-performance setting called X-Mode. Much like the Razer phone, Asus allows you to customize frame rate, processor speed, and anti-aliasing preferences on an app-by-app -app basis, but X-Mode can keep the ROG performing at its highest for all processes. The processor speed and frame rate can't go quite as low as the Razer Phone 2 can, and resolution can't be changed per app, but we'd be willing to bet that most gamers will find this level of tweaking sufficient, especially considering other features the ROG Phone packs. Unlike the Razer Phone 2, the ROG has a gaming dashboard dubbed Game Genie, which is accessible during gameplay and not only offers a quick shortcut to performance tweaks, but also app integrations for fast and easy game streaming, macro creation, and air trigger setup. Macros are mapped to gestures you draw on the screen, much like Zen Motion, but air triggers utilize their own hardware component, additional touch-sensitive buttons. These touch-sensitive areas are on the right side of the phone, leaving your index finger within tapping distance when holding the ROG phone in a landscape position. Game Genie allows you to map these two buttons to specific functions in each game by dropping virtual buttons over the on-screen ones. Each unique configuration is saved for each game. The implementation isn't perfect, the touch-sensitive areas would be easier to reach on the back of the phone rather than the side, but a hardware addition like this would be very welcome on the Razer Phone too. And the easy button mapping is something we deeply wish we had on the Razer Phone's Raiju mobile controller, which we'll touch on in a bit. The wide range of performance control on the Razer Phone is well implemented and easy to use, but the ROG Phone has this as well as a more mature, better looking UI with more gaming oriented features, handily beating the Razer Phone 2 in this category. The internals may be as close as it gets between these two phones, but even here there's some notable differences. Both run on pepped up versions of the latest Snapdragon 845 processor, but the ROG is just a bit peppier on paper, maxing out at 2.96 GHz as opposed to the Razer's 2.8. 8 gigs of RAM accompany the Snapdragon 845 on both of these devices, but the next big difference comes in storage. We love the ROG's starting capacity of 128 gigs, with the next step up being 512 so the lack of a microSD slot isn't that big of a deal. The Razer Phone 2, on the other hand, comes only in a 64GB capacity, but allows for microSD card expansion up to 1TB. In day-to-day -day use, it'll be next to impossible to notice any of these differences. Both phones are exceptionally snappy and smooth. Skipping around from app to app and performing the requisite tasks of a daily driver show these two to be more than capable, as anticipated. This leads us to gaming. So, who's the king where it really counts? It's actually a pretty close call. Neither the Razer Phone 2 nor ROG Phone will let you down with their gaming performance. We always had quick load times and smooth, stutter-free gameplay. That said, the Razer Phone screen always appeared smoother, with less jitter in games, even when we capped the refresh rate at 90Hz to match the ROG Phone. It seems Razer's display formula truly delivers results in comfort and performance. The ROG is by no means hard on the eyes for gaming. It's more comfortable than most any phone with a 60Hz refresh rate, but the Razer Phone 2 looks and feels better immediately when you start gaming, and especially as your session wears on. When it comes to battery life and thermal performance, they're pretty evenly matched, but the ROG Phone seems a bit better at keeping its cool. Both utilize vapor chamber cooling, and neither got hot enough to cause any discomfort or worry during our testing, even in some prolonged intensive sessions. Checking the temperatures though, we found the Razer Phone to consistently be anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees hotter after longer sessions despite having almost identical battery discharge rates during the same period. We wouldn't say this is a difference you can feel with your hands though, as they can both warm up but stay within a reasonable range. Gaming on phones has made leaps and bounds and becoming an experience many people can deeply enjoy. A lot needed to happen to help this along, but there are still a few aspects that could use some help. Asus is well aware of this and has tackled a good amount of these shortcomings in mobile gaming with various accessories for the ROG phone. The company offers six different ROG phone-specific peripherals that aid the ROG in gaming longer, cooler, more comfortably, and in more versatile, yet familiar, ways. One of which even comes in the box with the phone. This is in comparison to the Razer Phone 2, which only has one accessory for gaming, sold separately. Out of the ROG's six accessories, four are different types of docking stations, with the following emphases. The mobile desktop dock offers four USB-A ports, gigabit LAN, HDMI out, display out, a microphone, 3.5mm headphone jack, micro USB, and an SD card slot. This essentially makes the ROG phone a mini desktop computer. 
The Professional Dock is a dongle which adds HDMI, two USB-A ports, and gigabit LAN to your ROG phone. This brings the desktop experience with a few less ports and a few less dollars spent. Asus's Twin View Dock is a clamshell device consisting of a second Android-powered screen with two more speakers, an additional 6,000 mAh battery, and a place to mount the ROG phone. This gives the ROG a bit of the Nintendo DS experience, but developer support is severely lacking for interactive content, like controls or maps on the second screen. The Ygig Display Dock is a super low-latency wireless dock for mirroring the ROG's screen on a larger one. Paired with the GameVice controller, the ROG displays its Nintendo Switch-like versatility. The ROG's $80 GameFice controller and free aeroactive cooling fan round out the 6, bringing video game console controls and cool, efficient gaming respectively. To recap, the ROG's accessories can bolster your battery life, cool the phone, connect to big screens, convert the phone to an I.O.-filled desktop computer, and add console-like controls. What say you, Razer? Just the console controller bit? Okay, well, while we love the ergonomics and many button functionalities on the $150 Raiju mobile controller, it falls short in one key area, compatibility. For the most part, Asus's GameVice controller and the Raiju are compatible with the same games, a couple hundred or so, but most big titles are missing from this list. This is where Asus's Air Trigger software really shows its worth. The same drag and drop key mapping found in the Air Triggers menu enables the GameVice controller to map its controllers on any game. In the biz, they call that a game changer. We can safely say that the ROG wins this round decisively. Of course, you'll find requisite features like dual-band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 on both of these devices, but the Razer Phone 2 edges out the ROG here, with wireless charging and compatibility with all four major US carriers. The ROG isn't compatible with Verizon or Sprint, and charging currents don't flow through the back of this phone. Asus has impressed us with the cameras on more than a few of their recent devices, the ROG included. Here we have a dual-camera setup that pairs a 12-megapixel regular lens with an 8-megapixel wide-angle. Electronic image stabilization is used on both, but no optical image stabilization is incorporated. Razer's overhauled the Razer Phone 2's cameras pretty much entirely from their original Razer Phone, in both hardware and software. This year, we have two sensor-mounted 12-megapixel cameras. The main camera uses a wider-angled lens, and the secondary shooter a telephoto one. Optical stabilization is present on the main camera only. In terms of image quality, both of these handsets are capable of taking decent, accurate shots with little effort. More often than not, these were the results we received, but there were areas in which both would sometimes falter. In fact, it seemed that many of the Razer Phone's misses were hits for the ROG and vice versa, almost as if they were truly fated to one day meet for battle. In brighter lighting situations, the Razer's camera would often wash colors out a noticeable bit more than the ROG. Oversharpening could also be identified in photos where the ROG had no such issue. In dynamic low light, though, the Razer Phone 2 typically grabbed more detail than the ROG, which could be prone to smoothing and blur. These nitpicks aside, most pictures you take with either of these phones will come out good enough. In the end, we're going to have to call this one a draw, as for the most part, they both shoot pleasing photos, but every so often reveal their specific weaknesses. Video quality on these two is also quite similar. Both capture up to 4K resolution at 30 frames per second, but while the Razer's optical image stabilization is meant to smooth things out, we found it more jittery than the ROG's electronic stabilization. Much like in photography, the Razer phone can wash colors out a bit too. The Razer also records much quieter, flatter audio than the ROG, and Asus's device picks up more light in darker scenes. Though neither offers the best experience, the ROG ran away with it in this round. Calls on both phones showed no glaring issues. The earpieces on these are more than adequate, and the speaker phones are quite powerful on both. The Razer Phone 2's does sound slightly less tinny than the ROG's though. As gaming phones, the ROG and Razer Phone would be pretty disappointing without a strong media prowess. Luckily, they both have loud, full-sounding dual speakers firing right at your face, which easily immerses you in games, music, videos, or otherwise. The ROG does sound a tad tinnier than the Razer, though, as mentioned. Both deal well with spatial sounds, and both offer in-depth controls to tweak EQ. The Razer's courtesy of Dolby, and Asus is from its proprietary Audio Wizard app. The ROG also has a 3.5mm headphone jack, where the Razer phone has none bundling a USB-C to 3.5mm adapter in the box instead. Asus and Razer went with large, 4000mAh batteries in these phones. But which makes the most of it, you ask? In our use, light, heavy, and even idle, we found the Razer phone to be more efficient with its battery use, but by a pretty small margin. After putting the two phones through their highest and lowest power use cases, we usually found the Razer phone to be one or two battery percentage points higher than the ROG, which can add up. We also observed this slight advantage in our custom test, where the Razer phone lasted about 28 minutes longer. We wouldn't say that either of these phones are exactly juice sippers, though. 
Both devices are Quick Charge 4.0 certified, but the Razer Phone 2 juiced up from 0 to 100 in about 2 hours, 13 minutes less than the ROG took. We must say, it's a beautiful day when we get to compare two great phones against each other, and an even better one when they're both gaming phones. Not so long ago, the idea of a gaming phone conjured up nothing but high expectations and the inevitable failure to meet them. We can honestly and happily say that neither of these phones failed us in any way. It's a close race between these two, we can't deny that. Performance, battery life, and the cameras on these two phones are neck and neck, so the big decision may come down to just a few gaming features. For the ROG phone, the biggest selling point for gamers is the multiple accessories which bring fun and functionality and can truly transform the gaming experience, especially with a controller that can map to any game, a huge advantage for the ROG. On the other hand, the buttery 120Hz refresh rate on an already beautiful display makes us feel right at home gaming for hours on the Razer phone too. As always, preference is key, and it just doesn't seem like you can go wrong between either of these phones. So, for now, we'll just revel in the glory that we have the choice between such capable gaming phones. I'm Corey Gaskin with Phone Arena. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out PhoneArena.com for our full review on these phones and many others.